What three baits should you be using in the month of March? That's what we're gonna talk about right now. But before we do, please click that subscribe button and be part of the family. So March is kind of a weird month. Most of the anglers around the country are either in that pre-spawn phase or a spawning phase, or if you're down south like me, you're in post-spawn. Bass are gonna be very protective of their spawning areas. So we wanna take advantage of that and target those fish. You're gonna see a lot of males fanning beds or attract, trying to attract those big females to come over and seek out their home. So we wanna use baits that are gonna be the right size, but also grab their attention. We're not gonna be using uh, baits right now that are gonna get us reaction strikes. We're gonna really try to slow, th slow down and be methodical with the process of catching fish. March is a time when you're gonna see some cold fronts come through, you're gonna see some warmer spells come through. through. But as the water gets warmer, bass are gonna move up into the shallows. They're gonna try to find that mate or mates for that time and start to spawn. If you find grass or lily pads or, or things that are are that stick out, those those areas are going to hold fish right now. They're going to stay back, wait till the water gets a certain temperature, usually about 65 degrees, and then move in and spawn. So again, as the water temperatures move up, so do the bass. So remember that. Also remember if you have a couple nice warm days and a front's gonna come through that's a little bit cooler, fish that front. Fish that front, take a chill for a day or two and let that front come through and then fish directly after it. Those fronts are gonna make the barometer change and fish will get active before and then after it because they are doing their thing right now. They wanna find that special someone and have some bow chicka bow bow. So this month we're gonna have a common theme to some of the baits. To start off with, we're gonna really use baits that are kind of small. We're not gonna be using giant glide baits or, or big giant worms and things like that. Not that they won't catch fish. In fact, most of the lures that are in the February are still gonna work really well in March, like your spinner baits really are gonna do well, or your small jerk baits or twitch baits are gonna do really well too. But the three to today that we're gonna talk about are just gonna help you when you're in that pre-spawn phase. So to start off, I really, really like a beaver style bait. Here's why. I wanna use something that's crawfish oriented but also has a little bit of kicking action. And that's what this does really well. This is a spicy beaver. I wanna cast this on a Texas rig or a Carolina rig and I wanna cast it to where I think the, the fish are and just bounce it off the bottom. Just really slow bounces. Let the bass feel the vibration and the kicking from the tail or the legs and they'll seek it out. Now these bass, bass aren't gonna go for a long distance to go eat a bait. They still don't wanna move really far because they're very protective. But putting this bait near a bed is crucial and it's gonna get you a ton of bites. They're gonna pick the tail up and just try to move it, but as you get them more and more aggressive and they start to get in that feeding frenzy, they'll pick it up and eat it. And that's what we want. So when we cast this, we're just gonna cast and bounce it off the bottom, just really slow, real small bounces. Or if you really wanna get into it, make a cast and just drag your rod back towards you and let it bounce, just drag off the bottom. The kicking motion of the legs and also the little bit of dirt that's popping up as you're just bringing it across is gonna entice bass to find it, seek it out, and then eat it. My second bait I think you should be using is a belly weighted swim bait and a small swim bait. This is actually a new Strike King flood minnow that I'm working on the closer look for. But I want a, a, a bait that has a really nice tail, something that is small, finicky that I can make a cast to, and it looks like what everything they're eating is. Right now, they're not seeking out giant baits. You might have some shad that are spawning, you might have some bluegill that are spawning, and they're small. So we wanna use the same, as much as I hate to say it, match the hatch in terms of the size, and that's what we're gonna do with a smaller swim bait. Now the belly hook will make that bait kind of have a nice body roll, and I'm looking for that too, but the real thing that I want in is a really good kicker tail, one that has not only thumps, but also has that erratic wide motion, that wave in the back. 
and most of them do, but this one does especially. And this one is uh, really new. This is actually a saltwater bait that I think is gonna do very well for freshwater anglers. So my second bait I think you should be using is a small belly weighted swim bait. My third is really a no brainer. I'm actually using this bait right now and this exact trailer and it's just a jig. Now I normally like, I prefer darker jigs. I like the black and blues and that's why I have a black and blue Kai Tech, I think this is on the back. I don't even know what it is, but I want a black and blue bait, a dark bait. I want a dark jig. And of course I'm gonna use a weedless one. Now the thing about a jig is you're not gonna use a jig to do blind casting. I think that if you wanna be really successful, if you have a lay down or you have some grass or you have something that's a structure oriented in the water, that's when you pick up your jig. Or if you're putting it underneath a tree branch or something or a dock or whatever, that's when I think you, do, you use this. I don't think you use the jig when you just wanna to try to find fish. You use it in specific points where you think a fish is gonna be and then break it out and just slow methodically cast it and let it bounce off the wall uh, of the bottom of the seafloor and let the let the bait do the work don't just dra cast it and just reel it in super fast not that you can't get bites like that work the bait let the bait do the its job cast again make those bounces off the bottom of the seafloor or again drag it make it bounce slowly off the bottom and that'll entice the fish to find it it's this is this is a time of month when you, there's a lot of things that are going to work i mean really every month a lot of things are going to work you can you can catch them on giant glide baits and stuff like that but if you want to catch more let's downsize our baits a little bit and target the fish that are moving up that's what we want to do we want to catch the big ones now here's the problem with it you're going to catch a lot of small bucks that are very aggressive and are trying to do their thing but that's all right you're catching fish you have to weed through the small ones to catch the big ones that's what you have to remember so get in there get into that thick stuff and start casting get in there and if you have lily pads small lily pads or grass or weed lines it's not a bad idea to get a top water frog that you can work very slowly don't use it in a lot of twitches and giant movements just let that bait walk back 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 like this and you'll get bites there's a lot of lot of ways to catch them in March, and it's it's starting to get into that warmer time, and this is a really good transition month to to learn and try some new stuff. So hopefully these three baits help you catch more fish. Comment below what three baits you're going to be using. Remember, take a good fishing, get your fish on. I'll talk to y'all soon. Cheers.